400 feet above San Francisco Bay, bridge engineer Brian Maroney leads a catwalk tour to describe the complexities of Caltrans's latest Over 10, project. Over 10,000 members in this thing, right? You got this member coming in. You got these eye bars coming in from that side. You got another set coming in here. You got the um, wind bracing coming over here. You got this coming in. And then you got diagonals coming in from down below. As CEC Silverado takes this thing apart, they have to cont every time they take another member off, every time they take, they change the weight, it's a different set of loads going to different places and they have to keep track of this. It's like a, it's like a con continuous accounting, uh, a continuous set of accounting sheets that you have to recheck each time. And they're putting big construction loads, like great big Caterpillar excavators with a ram hoe on the end of it and they're moving them out and they have to be very careful about where they go. They have to take it apart literally one piece at a time and there's a there's only a few sequences there's only a few orders that that will work it's not moroni's first trip to the top of the bridge 17 years ago he made the same climb but described a different plan a plan to seismically strengthen the troubled span after the deadly loma prieta earthquake those fix-it plans were scrapped of course and a spanking new 6.4 billion dollar replacement was finally built now the old span must be scrapped, and it won't be easy. It's like a structural bow and arrow. So when you string the bow and arrow and it's tight, it's pre-stressed. It's actually, um, it's got a lot of strain energy, a lot of energy locked in, and it's locked in to very specific designed places. And those eye bars there are basically eight separate members coming together <laughs> into that section. And in this truss, the way it is intact, they're always in tension. When you cut it, you can't let it fall. You don't even want to let it swing. You want it stabilized, completely supported, then you cut it, and in theory, it doesn't even move. This was the longest cantilever truss, center span, in the world. We now have to take it down very, very carefully. We have to manage that, that energy that's held in this bridge, and that energy can really be dangerous. They have to basically take this bow and arrow apart. And every 10-year-old, it's bowed a uh, bow and arrow, right, strung it, now it's held it, held. Now if you were to just cut the bow and arrow, the thing go pow. That would that release of that energy, you could get hurt. Well now CEC and Silverado have basically the world's largest bow and arrow. And they have to very carefully unstring or destring the bow and arrow and manage and gradually take it apart. Then they can cut it apart and take it back for recycling. And we'll probably see this this bridge back in uh, cars and refrigerators and, and, and things like that. They have to do it in a way that's safe for their workers safe for our people and safe for the public that's still using underneath this bridge, right? There's still a navigable, navigable channel in here, so they have to be really careful um, uh, as they manage it.